Lesson R. Introduction. Force. Balanced and unbalanced forces. Contact forces wherein we'll talk about muscular force and frictional force. Non-contact forces wherein we'll discuss magnetic force, gravitational force and pressure. Now the first, very first question that I would like to ask you before I start this lesson on force and pressure is what causes motion? What causes an object to move? Motion is nothing but movement. So when an object or a person or a thing moves from one place to another, we say that that object is in motion. But what causes that motion? Who makes that object move? Just think of a simple thing like a ball. So let us suppose you have this ball. Now when you push this ball, the ball starts rolling and it starts moving. Now, if the ball is lying on the ground or it is lying on the table, until and unless you do not apply any sort of push or you do not make the ball move, do you think that the ball will start moving on its own? That will not happen. So in order to make the ball move or to make any stationary body move, we need to apply an external force. So here comes the word force. So force is actually something which causes an object to move. Now not only to move, it can even stop a moving object. For example, if there is a ball which is already rolling, so and if you want it to stop, so there has to be some force which is applied on the ball so that it stops. Now you might say that that doesn't really happen. If a ball is rolling on the ground, after some time, even if we do not stop it, it stops on its own. That's because a force is applied on the ball which stops its motion. Now we will talk about what kind of force is that. So that force is friction. So friction makes a moving ball stop on its own. So there also there is a force. So if we want a stationary body to move or a moving body to stop, we need to apply an external force. And this force is what we are going to talk about in this lesson. What exactly is this force? Is uh, just pushing an object is a force or just trying to stop an object is force? Is, is, is that all about force? Not really. We need to understand what is force. How do we define force in terms of physics? And that is what we will do in the first half of this lesson. Now, whenever we talk about force, if you talk about the definition of force, the two terms which are used are push and pull. Now, what do we mean by push and what do we mean by pull? You would have often seen, seen push and pull written on the doors of restaurants or hotels or shops. So you have the glass door. On one side it is written push. On the other side it is written pull. So what do you mean by these two terms? What is push? So the first picture, this one, what does it depict? Does it depict a push or a pull. It is a push. So push is always about a force which is applied to make an object move away from oneself. So here if you see this is the person who is applying force or we can say that this person is pushing this box. Now he is pushing the box in this direction and he is here. So he wants the box to move away from himself. So this is called push. But if we are applying force to make an object move and bring it closer to ourselves, that is called pull. So here in this case, you see this is the person and he is trying to pull this box towards himself. So whenever we are trying to bring something close to us, that is pull. And whenever we are trying to make something move away from us, that is push. And force is nothing but all about these kind of actions like pushing an object, pulling an object, lifting an object. So in all these scenarios, you are basically applying a force. For example, in this case, if you want to make this box move from one point to another, you need to push the box. What are you actually doing when you are pushing the box? You are actually applying force. So that is force. So let us look at some more examples of push and pull. Where do we push and where do we pull? So on the screen, you can see a lot of uh, examples, a lot of different scenarios. So let us look at the first figure. So this boy is playing football. So what is he doing? He's kicking the ball with his leg. 
So when he kicks the ball, is he trying to bring the ball close to himself or he is kicking it to let it go far from himself? So the ball is going far from him. So that means he's trying to push the ball. You look at this scenario, you have a door and it says push. Push means you have to push it in this direction. That means make the door move away from you. So if you are standing here, you are just pushing it so that the door goes away from you and then you can enter. Now when you shake your hands with somebody and if you are trying to uh, bring that person closer to yourself or if you are trying to make that person go away from yourself. So there you will have the concept of push and pull. So looking at this picture, you see this man, the first person and the second person. So this first person is trying to bring the second person closer to himself. So he is actually trying to pull him. So this is an example of pull where one is pulling two. Here you would have often seen these kind of buttons if you go to maybe a playstation or in fact if you, you would have seen it in many other buttons where you just need to press the button. So what happens when you press the button? So the button goes away from you. So you are basically pushing the button. Look at the drawers in your house. So the drawers, if you want to pull the drawer, what is a pull and what is a push? So when you open the drawer, what do you do? You try to pull it, that means you try to bring the drawer close to you. So this is an example of pull. But when you close the same drawer, that is an example of push. Because basically you are moving this part away from you. You are pushing it, it is going away from you. So this opening a drawer is an example of pull. Closing the drawer is an example of push. So these are various examples of push and pull. So now let us try to define force. So what is force? It is a push or pull that can change the state of motion of an object or change its shape. Now, does that mean that a force will always be a push or a pull? Well, this is how we define it in simple terms. But actually, these two terms alone do not define force. Force is all about any action that you do to change the state of motion of an object or to change the shape of an object. Now we will see how, what do we mean by state of motion and what do we mean by how it changes shape. So we will see all that. But when we talk about force, force could be a push, it could be a pull, it could be lifting an object, it could be dropping an object, it could be carrying an object. So all of these would require a force to be applied on that object. Now, this force, what will it do? It can either change the state of motion of an object. Now, what do, we, what do we mean by state of motion? That means what kind of state a moving object in? The object is not at all moving. That means the object can either be stationary. The object can be a moving body which is currently moving. The object can be a body which is moving at a certain speed. It is a slow moving body or a fast moving body. So all these things define the state of motion. How exactly the object is moving. Whether the object is moving or the object is at rest. Object is moving fast. Object is moving slow. Object is moving in which direction. So all these together define the state of motion. So when we talk about state of motion, it would include the direction of motion. It would include the speed at which it is moving. The speed could be slow, it could be fast. It also talks about whether the object is at rest or it is moving. So all these things define the state of motion. Now whenever a force is applied, it is capable of changing the state of motion. That means if an object is at rest, it can make the object move. Similarly, if an object is moving, it can make the object come to rest. So basically, initially, when this ball was moving, that time the state of motion was moving. When you applied force, the state of motion is rest. Similarly, in the first case, initially the ball was at rest. But when you applied force, the ball started moving. Similarly, it is also possible that when you are driving a car. Now as you change or as you apply accelerator, the speed of the car increases. So that means when you apply force on the accelerator, the speed of the car increases. So the state of motion is changing. Earlier it was moving at a slower speed. Now it is moving at a faster speed. So what can we say is that 
force is that kind of a push or a pull or some action which can make a stationary object move so it can make a stationary object so it can make a stationary object move that is one thing that it can do it can stop a moving body so if a birth, if an object is already moving it can stop that object what else it can do it can change the speed of a moving body that means it can slow down a fast moving body so it can slow down a fast moving body or it can even fasten up a slow moving body so we can say slow down a fast moving body or vice versa it can also change the direction of motion so maybe the ball was moving in a particular direction so the ball was moving towards right towards this direction now you apply a force in such a way that the ball starts moving in this direction so in that by that way force can also change the direction of motion right so these are so many things which a force should be able to do and that is why we say that force can change the state of motion of an object it can change state of motion that is suppose you are driving your car so you can change the speed or you can vary the speed of your car so you, you can make your car move really really fast you can make your car car move really, really slow you can change the direction of your car whether you want to go right or left so those direction can be changed and for all each of these changes you need to apply some force so force can change the state of motion similarly let us suppose there are two vehicles running on the road now if one of these vehicles they just apply an accelerator without seeing if any other vehicle is coming or not then these two vehicles might collapse they might collide with each other so what happened both were moving initially but now their speed decreased in fact maybe one or two both of them would have come to rest so their state of motion changed now there can be some other examples where we know that we are applying force but we do not evidently see a change in the state of motion let us look at this example. Let us suppose that this person is trying really, really hard to make the wall move. So he is applying force. So you cannot say that he is not applying force. He is applying force, but the wall is not moving. So in this case, what will you say? That force is not causing a change in state of motion? Well, in this case also, force is causing a change. But what kind of change is it causing? It is causing some change internally. So the change is so nominal when compared to the mass of that object because the wall is extremely heavy and hard, right? So the mass of the object is extremely heavy. So the force which is being applied by the person, even though it is a I mean, very strong force, but it is not strong enough to get noticed. Now, if the same wall, if, if force is being applied to the same wall using a bulldozer, what will happen to the wall? So the wall will just vanish. Right, because the force applied by the bulldozer is going to be very, very high when compared to the force applied by this person. So sometimes the change which is being brought by the applied force is not noticeable. Now, it is not only the change of state, change, changing the state of motion which takes place on applying force. Force can also change the shape of object. So let us see how force can change shape of an object. Now, let us suppose you have a balloon, a balloon which has already been inflated. So you have a big round balloon. Now what do you think will happen if you apply some force on the balloon? If you try to press the balloon from both sides using your hands, the balloon, the shape of the balloon changes. Initially it was all spherical, now it is little oval in structure. So it gets pressed due to the force applied by your hands. So this shows that force application can bring about a change in the shape of the object. Let us look at a few more examples. Just think of your toothpaste tube. Now whenever you press the tube, toothpaste comes out of it. But have you ever noticed that at the same time, the shape of the tube also keeps changing? As more and more uh, paste comes out of it, the shape of the tube also keeps changing. So what changes the shape of the tube? It is due to the force which is applied when we squeeze it. 
So we apply some force on the tube which causes a change in shape of the tube. Take another example where you break an object. For example, you have a gun. You apply so much of force that it breaks. So do you, don't you think that the shape got changed? Earlier it was just one single piece of a gun. But now it is just broken into two parts. So there is a change in shape. So in all these examples, you can see that on applying a force, the object might change its shape. So whenever a force is applied, either the state of motion will change, that means moving object will come to rest or an object at rest will start moving, speed of the object will change or direction of motion will change or the shape of the object will change. So one of these changes will have to take place wherever force is applied. So that is why we define force as a push or pull which causes a change in shape of the object or a change in state of motion of the object. Let us now look at some of the examples where we will see that force is being applied in many different directions. So do you remember the game of tug of war where you have a big strong rope and then you have two teams, one team on one side and the other team on the other side of the rope. And then this team, let us say this is team one and this is team two. So both of them, what do they do? They, they try to push the rope or they try to pull the rope rather towards themselves. So these, first, these people, this team two, they try to apply a force in this direction, whereas team one tries to apply a force in this direction. And who wins? The team who applies a greater force because the one who applies a greater force, the rope tends to move in that direction and then the other team falls towards them. So that is how tug of war is being played. And here we see, uh, I mean, this is one of the best examples where you can actually see how force is being applied. Let us take another example. You play so many different types of games. For example, think of cricket. So in cricket, the bowler, he bowls. So when he throws the ball, he needs to apply some force so that the ball moves or the ball travels a particular distance. So what is the bowler doing? The bowler is applying a force on the ball before throwing it. Similarly, the person who is batting, he also needs to apply a force so that his bat strikes or hits the ball so strong that the ball again can travel a certain distance. So this person is also applying some force on the ball through his bat. Right? Again, you take another example like hockey. So there also players have their hockey sticks with which they try to uh, hit the ball. So there also they are applying a force. Think of football. So what, what happens in football? The, uh, the player tends to kick the ball. So when he kicks the ball, he is actually applying a force with his leg on the ball. Basketball, where again you throw the ball, you try to throw it to, to reach a greater height so that the ball falls into the basket. So here also you are applying a force on the ball. So while playing any of the games, you tend to apply force so that the ball is able to move in your desired way. Let us think of some other examples. Now, it is not necessary that only pushing, pulling or kicking stuffs uh, involves force. There are some different types of examples as well. For example, when you lift objects, lifting objects is one example there where you do not push an object, you do not pull an object, but still you are applying a force on the object. So let us suppose that this big box, this purple box which this man is carrying, it was lying on the ground. So first he has to pick it from the ground. So do you think that the person will have to apply some force to pick the box from the ground? Yes, of course, it is a huge box and you need to apply some force so that you are able to pick it up and carry it or lift it from the ground. So during lifting also, you need to apply some force. Now not only lifting, if you look at the third picture, you see that he lifted the box and then he is carrying it as well. So he has to continuously apply some force on the box so that he is able to carry the box constantly as he moves. So these are also examples where force is being applied on the object.
so as i as in the definition i said that force is a push or pull which causes a change in motion of the object or change in shape now it is not necessary that force has to be only push or pull it can be push pull lifting an object kicking an object so all these will be force but it is for sure that it is going to change either of the two things either it will change the shape of object or it will change the state of motion everywhere we talk about not only the magnitude of force that means how much force is being applied but we also talk about the direction like when you are playing football now the direction towards which you kick the ball is equally important right so when we talk about direction as well as magnitude so force is a physical quantity that has both magnitude and direction so what do we mean by magnitude that means how much force is being applied for example if you have to move a box now you have the same box in the first scenario you are applying small force that means less amount of force in the second scenario you have again the same box the same person but here the person is applying more amount of force so here it less force is being applied here more force is being so that means in this case magnitude is small that means small amount of force is being applied now force has magnitude so now you understand what is magnitude but it also has direction like in this case if you see the person is pushing the box that means he is trying to apply a force in this direction so if he applies sufficient force then the box will move in this direction similarly here also force is being applied in this direction so let us look at these examples so here also you see in this scenario the person is lifting the box and he is moving in this case the person is trying to push the box in this direction in this case the person is trying to push the box in this direction so everywhere you have a particular direction in which the force is being applied so it is not only magnitude which is important that is how much force is being applied that is important but besides that direction is equally important now what will happen if multiple forces are applied on a body in the same direction let us suppose you have this huge box and th there is this person a who is applying a force in this direction so let us suppose that this person a is applying a force say f1 of 10 Ten is the magnitude of the force, and newton is the unit in which force is measured. For example, in order to measure mass, we use kg, right? When you go to a shop to buy potatoes, you say that I need ten kgs potato. So kg is nothing but the reference or the unit of measurement. So similarly, when you go to buy milk, you talk in terms of liters. Similarly, when we talk about force, we talk in terms of newton. So let us suppose this person A applies a force of ten newton on this box. Now let us suppose that there is another person who is also pushing the box to in the same direction. So he is also trying to apply a force in this direction. And what is the force that he is applying? Let us say the magnitude of the force is twenty newton. So this person B is applying greater force when compared to person A. Now, in this case, what will be the total force that is being applied on this box by A and B? So, the net force in this case will be F one plus F two. So, the net force acting on the box will be equal to F one plus F two. So, that will be equal to ten plus twenty. That is equal to thirty newtons. So, this is the total force that is acting on this box. so we see that forces applied in the same direction get added up now in this case we added both of them because the both of these are applied in the same direction now what will happen if they are applied in opposite direction so in this case let's see what happens again let us suppose this is person a and he is applying a force in this direction so he is actually trying to push the box in this particular direction and let us say that f1 is equal to 10 newton 
Now this time let us suppose person B is not on the same side instead he is on the other side of the box and he is trying to push the box in this direction so he is applying a force in this direction and the magnitude of this force is 20 newtons. Now in this case what will happen now when A is applying a force on the box the box will tend to move a little bit in this direction but at the same time somebody else is applying a force in this direction. So. So even though now how do we know how the box will move? So the box will move as per the greater force. Now here in this case F1 is a smaller force but F2 is a greater force. So obviously F2 will dominate and therefore the box will move finally in this particular direction. And what would be the net force that is acting on this box? So the net force acting on this box will be equal to F1 minus F2 because they both are in opposite direction so they both get compensated. So the net force is the difference between forces applied in opposite direction that's because whatever force is being applied in this direction they get, that get compensated by an equal and opposite force correct. So here F1 is 10 Newton and F2 is 20 newtons which is greater f2 so that means the box will move in the direction of f2 so f2 is in this direction so the box will also move in this direction and the net force would be equal to 10 minus 20 which is equal to minus 10 newton so what does this minus sign indicates so this minus sign indicates that the box will be moving in this particular direction so and the net force acting on the object is 10 newtons so now you understand what happens if forces are applied in the same direction or in opposite directions.